Hi, and welcome to this presentation on green buildings and sustainability in Axon Abel as part of our e-learning program. My name is Adam Stevenson, and I'm based in the worldwide headquarters of the protective coatings business of Axon Abel. So in this webinar today, we're going to look at a few key areas. First of all, we'll review what sustainability means to Axon Abel. Then we'll look at some of our activity in the green building space, review some of the standards such as LEED and BRIAM, look at some of the work that we're doing around EPDs and other testing and standards, and then take a quick look at what's next. So first of all, what does sustainability mean to Axon Abel? Well, first of all, our company has an ambition, and that ambition is to be the sustainability leader in the paints and coatings industry by empowering people, reducing our impact on the planet, and consistently innovating to bring the most sustainable paint and coating solutions to our customers. So how do we turn that into something actionable? Well, first of all, for people, we want to remain the sustainability leader in our industry. We need to deliver the best results to our people, our partners, communities, and our customers. It's about developing our talented workforce and embracing our approach to human rights and diversity. And it includes the numerous local projects we carry out that bring significant benefits to people and their communities. Moving on to planet, we are clearly stating our commitment to reducing our environmental footprint to protect and preserve the world around us. It includes the many steps we've taken and continue to take to reduce our environmental impact through reformed value chains. It also incorporates our dedication to reducing energy use, lowering CO2 emissions, VOC reduction and waste, while increasing our use of renewable energy. And finally, the paint pillar. Our product innovation is driven by sustainability. That means the new products we bring to market have sustainability benefits, not only for the environment, but also for our customers. Around 40% of our sales come from products with a sustainability benefit, and we intend to grow this proportion significantly. We're also leading an exciting transformation of the industry with our call for collaborative innovation through our Paint the Future innovation ecosystem. The United Nations Sustainability Development Goals inspire all our actions, and we've identified three where we believe we can make a real impact. SDG 11 around sustainable cities and communities through our products with sustainability benefits. SDG 12, so responsible consumption and production through the environmental programs in our operations and supply chain. And SDG 17, partnerships for the goals to jointly learn, innovate and contribute to solutions to tackle societal and environmental challenges. As part of our commitment to sustainability, Axon Abel is a member of the World Green Building Council's Corporate Advisory Board. The Corporate Advisory Board, or CAB, helps to set the strategy for the various green building councils in the area of green buildings. The CAB includes a select group of companies who are global leaders in sustainability and the built environment. And that includes a number of major players in construction and a number of corporations with huge footprints. So moving on to green buildings now and how this relates to our business. The US EPA says a green building is the practice of creating structures and using processes that are environmentally responsible and resource efficient throughout a building's life cycle from siting to design, construction, operation, maintenance, renovation and deconstruction. And what makes a building green? Well, this can be various different things, including efficient use of energy, water and other resources, use of renewable energy, pollution and waste reduction measures, environmental air quality, a design that enables adaptation to a changing environment, the use of non-toxic ethical and sustainable materials, consideration of the environment throughout the design, construction, operation and end of life of a building, and also consideration of the quality of life for the occupants or users of those buildings. And some of this is driven by industry itself, as a number of organisations, cities and corporations are setting targets for building stock. REBA, 
set a 2030 climate challenge in October 2019. This sets out targets for operational energy, embodied carbon and water use. The World Green Building Council released an embodied carbon report in September 2019, setting out targets for all stakeholders. As an example, manufacturers should have 40% of their product ranges with environmental product declarations by 2025. In New York City in 2019, the city itself set out targets for carbon use. In the United Kingdom, this was the first country to set legally binding zero carbon targets for 2050. And in San Francisco, there's a target of zero waste by 2020. Currently, this is about 77%. And of course, these commercial benefits as well as sustainability benefits to building green. Research has shown that LEED certified buildings have lower utility costs. And for the operators of the buildings, LEED certified buildings have higher residential rental values and higher commercial rental values. In addition to this, and further to the previous slide, some states uh, or cities are now starting to add fines for poor carbon performance. Within the protective coatings business of Axonabel, we've wrapped up our approach to green buildings under the Kaleidoscope initiative. And part of the Kaleidoscope campaign is to reframe what we see as green or how we can make things more green. The campaign initially is to set a new baseline in product sustainability performance and to try and set Axon Abel as leaders in the green building space. We're looking to collaborate and build partnerships with key movers and shakers in the green buildings industry. And we want to understand the impact and improve the sustainable performance of our product ranges. Moving on to standards, we'll now take a quick look at the LEED standard and how Axonabel can help with certification. LEED is the most widely used green building rating system in the world and is administered by the US Green Building Council. Projects pursuing LEED earn points across several categories, including energy use, air quality and materials and resources, as can be seen on the diagram on the page. Based on the number of points achieved, a project will be certified to one of the levels. We know that protective coatings can help contribute towards a minimum of seven points for lead. These seven points, though not a large number necessarily standalone, can contribute to a building being certified at a higher level. And looking at these seven points in a little bit more detail, the first two can be achieved through sustainable sites. This is about minimising the effects on microclimates and human and wildlife habitats by reducing heat islands. Then there's an additional two points in the materials and resources category, which is dedicated to encouraging the use of products having life cycle information and environmentally, economically and socially preferable life cycle impacts. And coatings can be used to help towards an additional three points in the indoor environmental quality category. This is about reducing concentrations of chemical contaminants that can damage air quality, human health, productivity and the environment. One of the questions we do get asked regularly is which of our products are certified to LEED or one of the other standards. So just to be clear, products don't get certified to LEED. Individual products can only contribute towards a building becoming LEED certified, either individually or as a combination with other products from other suppliers. We can, however, supply products which will contribute towards LEED credits. And we typically demonstrate this through third party testing or certification of our products to certain standards. 
So now a specific example. The text on this page is taken direct from Lead V4. It outlines some of the specifics around the use of environmental product declarations. Note the requirements for at least 20 EPDs from at least five manufacturers. Other caveats and subclauses exist to help support higher contributions. Product sourced, that means extracted, manufactured, and or purchased within 100 miles or 160 kilometers are valued at 200%. Moving on to the second most common standard, BRIAM. BRIAM is the world's longest established method of certifying green buildings. It's used in more than 70 countries with the center of the BRIAM industry in Northwest Europe. Like LEED, it assesses a range of categories to produce a rating. Categories including energy and water use, materials, waste, and transportation. Certification has to be completed by independent licensed assessors. And as before, the score creates a separate rating. The BREAM standard allows us to contribute in a few different areas again. Firstly, on indoor air quality, of which we can potentially help with two. This is products which have a maximum content of certain carcinogens, VOCs and formaldehyde, or VOC limits for specific products. In materials two, in the environmental impact and construction products, we can help with one credit. Again, this is to do with EPDs. And finally, in the innovation category, there's also an option to gain points through some of the key strategic areas that we look at, including fire design. There are a wide ranging number of regional standards around certification of green buildings. In many countries or regions, they have specific certifications. In the Middle East, as an example, there's the DCL certification, of which we have gained. In other regions, we might be able to help with local standards, such as Green Star in Australia or Three Star in China. If you let us know your requirements, we'll review our product ranges and our capabilities to help secure certification. Our chosen route to help support green building certification is through the use of environmental product declarations. Currently within the protective coatings area of green buildings development, transparency of materials is often more important or as important as the green credentials themselves. Our chosen route to demonstrate this is through the use of EPDs. And ideally these EPDs should be created from a cradle to cradle life cycle. Scores generated include global warming potential or ozone molecule creation, amongst other things. EPDs are becoming more prevalent and in the future will become a comparison indicator. So what is an EPD? Well, it's a standardized way of quantifying the environmental impact of a product or system. Our EPDs are created and vetted in accordance with ISO 14025. An EPD communicates transparent and comparable information. And just to be clear, having an EPD for a product doesn't mean that it's environmentally superior to others. EPDs can be completed over various elements of a product life cycle. And in order from most transparent to least, this includes cradle to cradle, which includes end of life and recycling scenarios, cradle to grave, which in our view is a minimum requirement which includes transportation to site, application and waste disposal, and also cradle to gate, which is only to the point where a finished product is at the gates of a factory. EPDs for protective coatings cover off six main areas. Firstly, coatings characteristics. So what are the raw materials in the coatings? How are they manufactured? How are they transported to site? Second, production details. So within our factories themselves, What's the energy source? What's the production uh, volume and so on? Thirdly, packaging. So what are the raw materials in the packaging? Are they steel? Are they plastic? And so on. Fourth, logistics. So this can cover transportation of raw materials to our production sites. And just as importantly, the transportation of finished goods to the actual application site or installation site itself. Fifth is the application and or installation. So during the application of our products, 
what's the carbon footprint there? And finally, end of life, is recycling taken into account? And so on. As of May 2020, we have EPDs covering 21 different products across 14 different manufacturing sites. We have many more underway with our third party provider, but the ones that we do have in place give a good broad spectrum of products suitable for a range of uses across the built environment and heavy industry, as well as some oil and gas plants. And just to reiterate one of my earlier comments, it is possible to undertake EPDs on various elements of a product's life cycle. Some suppliers only undertake EPDs up to the point where they have a finished product at the gates of their factory ready to ship. It is much better to undertake the EPD for as much of the life cycle as possible. This has to include transportation to site, application or use of material, and where possible, waste disposal and reuse or recycling. Outside of EPDs, there are a few other test methods and standards which we like to follow to deliver the full product package. Some of these standards include ISO 16000, looking at the quality of indoor air, including VOC levels, BES 6001, which is around responsible sourcing, including modern slavery, and ISO 14001, which is around environmental management, including labeling, life cycle analysis, and audits. So what's next, and where do we see the industry heading? Well, as I mentioned, at the moment, the industry is looking at transparency but the availability of EPDs, emissions testing, and so on is only the starting point. So firstly, we want to undertake a study program to understand what within our supply chain has the biggest impact on product sustainable performance. Is it transportation? Is it manufacturing? Is it raw materials? Secondly, we'll use the results from the stud study to feed into research and development to drive the development of more sustainable products with lower embodied carbon. And finally, we can use these results to improve the sustainability performance and the impact of our full range. So generally, we want to use innovation to drive higher solids, lower VOC, lower emissions, water-based products, all elements which can support sustainable activity in the coatings industry. Thank you for your time today. And if you have any further questions or need any further detail on some of our actions in this area, please contact your local representative of Axonabel.